Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Pat Jones Show. I'm Robbie Robertson, along with Oklahoma State head coach Pat Jones. The Cowboys opened their Big 8 conference season this past Saturday, taking on interstate rival Oklahoma, and the Cowboys gave the seventh-ranked Sooners all they could handle before finally losing uh, 31-17. And, Pat, there have been every, every one of the games almost, it seems like, in the Bedlam series, there's been a unique set of circumstances, and the ball game this past Saturday was, was filled with them as well. Well, Robbie, to say the least, the one thing I want to take time to do now that I don't think I really did a real good job of in the post game. I, I didn't use real good language and I didn't say the words really that I wanted to say in explanation of what occurred right prior to the end of the first half. Uh, at, at one point, Robbie, with about 20 seconds left, uh, now we've kind of decided, or I've decided, let's try to stop the clock, force a punt. We had a little bit different style of punt block in, the, and we'll see it on the film later on. I think the first time we did it, Joe King came clean, and we it stumbled. Well, it gave us the opinion that we could block punts. Sometimes over the years, you know, we have blocked punts on these guys, and we have done some things to confuse their punt protection. Well, now at about 20 seconds left, this is what's starting to go through my mind. So at some point, and I can't remember how much time was exactly on the clock, I'm starting to signal for a timeout. Now, with 11 seconds left, I did see one of our players with the referee doing this. Now, I took my eyes off the clock because there was so much commotion going on, band coming on the field, players leaving, right. places going crazy, the whole bit. Now, and, and the next time I look back up at the clock, it's winding down to zero. Well, when they put three seconds back on, now I can't get a real clear explanation of why it doesn't say 11, 11 seconds. instead of three. At three, you're not going to stop it. You know, I'm not going to do that. At 11, I don't think that they probably could have thrown Hail Mary. I think they would have had to punt. If they throw Hail Mary with 11 and it's incomplete or they take a sack or whatever, now we've got a chance maybe to do something. Even, Robbie, if we block a punt with three seconds left, it's not going to do any good. So the logic behind it was stop the clock with enough time left to give you a realistic chance to block the punt. We weren't even going to attempt to field it had we not blocked it. Just let it hit the ground, let time run out. But we did think we had some things going there with the punt block. And again, I said irrelevant in, in the post-game interview. It, it was not an irrelevant play. It was a very big play in the ball game. Now, I don't think it was the deciding factor in the game. I guess that's what I meant to right. see, is to say. But again, I, yes, it was a big play. It was not irrelevant. It was a big play. And we'll talk about it later when we get into these highlights. But, Robbie, I wanted to kind of get this thing going with this because obviously that's what's right. the topic of conversation. Well, and I think, I think that explanation explains that there was some communication problem down on the field with the official. Why wasn't the clock stopped uh, when you asked for timeout mm -hmm. or when the team asked for timeout? So I think we're all squared away now. And it was the 85th renewal of the Bedlam rivalry. And we'll have first quarter highlights as the Pat Jones Show continues. It was a little windy in Stillwater this past Saturday, about 82 degrees, not a bad day for football. Oklahoma won the toss. Uh, Pat deferred to the second half. You, uh, you chose to defend the West goal. We took the win, Robbie, and I, quite honestly, I did not want to go in and play offense first against them. We've done that some over the years and, and have gotten bottled up and, and, and we've paid, we've suffered for it. Kerry actually mishit this kickoff and, and let him get past the, up to the 30 yard line, but Actually, the scenario did develop what we wanted to. You can see here that from the outset, we're faking blitzes and we are blitzing. We had quite a bit of stuff in defensively. Here you can see this here with Michael Waterridge up inside. Good job, Jay Fleshman. Uh, there are reasons that you can do this and some teams you can attempt it and some not. And I really don't want to go into the whys of there. But you can see that, that it did have some quite a bit of impact throughout. I think in the second half they handled it. There comes Joe King right there and stumbled. Right, and, and now, now, from the right side. Yes, from the right side. Now, Riddell, for whatever reason, did miss hit this ball. Uh, so, again, this is what I was talking about before. It did give us the impression we had a chance there. Good job, Gerald Hudson. I thought Gerald ran extremely good. And here's the same play coming up again. Uh, we're getting better at some things and some things that we've still got to, to get improved on. We'll talk about Gerald's performance later on. But I'd like to talk about Scott Webb's performance well, too. Well, uh, uh, again, on. yeah, it's number 63. I think I, I, I think I used Medal of Honor after. And I, you know, I don't know how well he really performed, but again, just to go out there and do what he did, you can see Gerald bouncing outside. We're using quite a few formations. We had some new shifts. 
uh, again, we had had two weeks to prepare and probably were able to put in, in some stuff and feel more comfortable with it than you might have had in a normal situation. There's the power set, Gerald running for a first down. We move the ball a little bit more effectively. Pitch it, Earl, there we go right there. Didn't get the pitch off clean than, than maybe I had thought, although we did think that we could run the ball some. I didn't, we didn't think we could do it all day long. Cecil Wilson for short yardage here. But we had, this is a good drive. Again, we came in, stopped and we're going down. All right, now this kind of stuff here, we're real lucky they didn't, Blevins didn't run down there and, and score with this ball. Uh, this kind of stuff you, you really can't do and win. This, this ticks me off uh, this and turn the ball over. That is a turnover as much as anything. We knew that offensively, uh, our de from our defensive standpoint, a lot of things would be pretty hit and miss. They were going to get some and so were we. But you can see the pressure coming here. Collins now makes a nice throw. And we, well, there's some bodies flying around out there mm. then. Uh, so they go in out and now Collins sneaks for the first down. But uh, we figured with this style of defense, it is, uh, you're rolling the dice some. Uh, come on, wrap up. Now, we did not do a real good job. Werner missed a tackle there and Lee stayed with him. Uh, we did more of this than you would like. There's one right there. See, he runs over Michael Woolridge. Probably the frustrating thing about this type of scenario is I think we did a pretty good job plan-wise of getting some people freed up. Now, again, this is where, I, like I said, you just got to make plays. There's another missed tackle here. Ainsley c continues to run him down. But uh, OU has done a good job of driving the ball down the field. They run up inside here and don't get much. But uh, we, I thought I could tell from over there. I don't know how in the world they didn't give McKinley a touchdown there. I'd be real honest about it. And I thought that yesterday because I couldn't see it from the bench. I think they go ahead and sneak it in and score right here. Now that ball did come out, but I, apparently they had already sent it across the plane of the goal line. Yeah, right. and I'm, it probably was from that guy had a good view of it. But 67 yard drive. I can tell now, or think I can tell now, Robbie, that this is, that we're gonna make some plays on them and they're gonna make some on us. The encouraging thing is was that, that we had driven the ball down the field uh, and gotten down, I think that was the 28 or the 30 or some place where we did have the mishandled exchange. And, um, at least we have moved the football. Now this is pretty impressive coming up here. We got to toss that ball a little bit cleaner. Oh, we'll used good defensively. We knew this coming in. They were a little bit crippled up. Apparently they had a few new or different faces or faces show up different places. But here's Hudson right here. This is this is a nice run. Good job, men. Good job of blocking. And there's really nothing that has happened, Robbie, to make us think that we cannot move the ball. Now we're not. I'm not saying that we're just going to take and drive the length of the field every series. Come back and run the reverse. Right now, we had a clip that didn't get called, and Mayfield hits, gets clean, and good job, man. You can see, yeah, this is this is this, this kind of ball game where there's bodies flying all over the place. Now, we've just taken it, and we're blasting back down the field. Here you can see you got Vernon Brown in the ball game. Great effort by Vernon. That a boy, Vernon. Uh, alternating the tailbacks. Hudson had made the long run. Uh, good job, Cecil Wilson. Great job of blocking. Good job of, uh, watch, watch, Vernon's effort here to take care of that football, get it tucked away, and that's a way to fight and scratch. I thought there was a lot of fighting and scratching in a clean way. Here's another one. Now, this kind of stuff here, uh, really, I don't really know what to attribute that to other than lack of rec repetitions under pressure. Good job, Earl. Good job, Scott Copeland. Copeland's really coming on. We think that he is really playing well, both block-wise and both catch-wise. Okay, there we go, Gerald. So the thing that we were able to do in the, these, these first two drives here, there's the option again, is really not ever hardly put ourselves, Robbie, in long yardage situations. Now it hurt us in the second half when we got into must throw situations, draw play here, and we're able, good job, Gerald, repeat, but we, did, we stayed away from real long yardage situations by, uh, as a rule in these first two drives, which gave us a, a, some, a chance to do some things as opposed to getting real long yardage Every, every situation and let them tee off and substitute and rush a passer. Now you talk about great effort right. here. Watch Here's this, folks. Play. This is a this is a great one here. I could not tell from the sideline exactly what happened. I knew that the, the pile is getting pushed backwards. But great job, Cecil Wilson. Good job. There's, there's that a boy, Look at Scott the Hall. Here. Well, and again, I, both sides. I mean, both sides are getting after each other in a, in a real big way. And, Touchdown, great effort, and now the ball game's tied at seven. Blanchard comes in, now it's tied at seven and, and, and kicks the extra point. That was a 90-yard drive, 10 plays, used up five and a half minutes on the clock. That's here, what you're talking about. Here comes about, the huh? horse and the whole bit. And this, you know, the, the, I, we've got the impression now that this thing's going to be quite a contest. Blanchard comes in, 
Kicks it all the way out of the end zone. Great job. Now he's going to have to start on their own 20. Still going into some wind. We've got the option played well with Collins. Good job. Gildon made a real good play. And you can see that the emotion is, is really starting to build because it was there from the outset. And now it's, it's picked up dramatically. And we are at the end of the first quarter. Oklahoma State 7, Oklahoma 7. We'll be back with second quarter highlights right after this. We start the second quarter. Oklahoma has the football. It's second and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Uh, your defense has played pretty well so far in the first quarter, Pat. Well, with the exception of a long drive, I, I thought we had. Now, here's this pretty good play I'll wrap up, man. Again, this is the thing that uh, tends to irritate me more than really probably anything else that happened out there. But here comes the blitz again. Uh, he's patting the ball, and you can see this is just pretty much panic-type stuff. And, that's the one that Joe King, I thought really from the bench area, the ball hit the ground. Be from my way. angle on the sideline, Coach, it hit the ground. Yeah, I, I thought so too. Now, again, you can see that uh, his knee was down right there. And, and so, they, you know, some say they're now, now they're starting to jump around, which I think all the movement and the stuff that we were doing started having a little bit of an effect on their offensive lineman, which traditionally it will. The times that we've done this over the years, it normally will. Come on, fellas, stay up. Now, he does a, uh, Collins does a good job scrambling outside. You can see we got, bang, George Bryant hit him. I, we got to do a little bit better job of that. We've, at times, we just tend to stand around. I cannot give an explanation for that. All right, there you go. Good job, fellas. Nothing here. You can see a repeat of it. Uh, what I was saying earlier, they're getting us some and we're getting them some is, is pretty much happening. Good job, Nobles. Good job, Eric Garman. Pretty well played. I mean, we've got people around. Uh, sure, you're gambling when you do some of this type of stuff, but on the same hand, uh, OU came into the ball game ranked fourth in the country in rushing offense and 104th in pass offense. I mean, they're, they're, that, so that kind of uh, gives you an idea that you, you better try to force them to throw the ball. And here again, now this one does get intercepted. Jay Fleshman, nice job, That's Jay. Great effort. Great effort. Uh, figuring to get, that they're going to throw some up and they're going to catch some. Some of them they're going to throw up and we're going to. Uh, we're going to make something happen. You can see here comes Charles Verner's actually the free safety watch, on a, on a blitz Verner. right here. Uh, that's a way to stay with him. That's a way to jump up in the air. And uh, does ball, did he tips the ball? Yeah, I guess he, he hits he, his arm or something. Correct. Okay, now good job, Gerald. That's a way to spin through things, about five yards. I thought really against quality competition, from, a, from an effort standpoint, I thought this might have been one of uh, Gerald's better ball games. Again, OU can run well. I thought they were playing hard. Uh, and I think it was a real good confrontation to them. Okay, Earl the, threw this one deep. They've got enough speed in the secondary where I really never did think, or we didn't think that you could necessarily get in behind them real easily. Now this is this is interesting here. This is a 74 yard That's, punt. Yeah, that ball just hung right on the sideline. I'm glad some, uh, we did that to somebody as opposed to somebody else doing it to us. And we kill it right here. I think there's about a minute 49 or something like that uh, left here, okay, McKinley breaks it. We got a linebacker pinned inside. We did have a blitz on again there. We tried to keep as, as an aggressive an attitude about really things offensively and defensively and special team wise as we possibly could. Here we've got it right here. They run the trap and, and really don't make a whole lot. Uh, how much time's left, Robbie? There's, remember, there's about that? nine minutes. Okay, I'm left. sorry. This was a there's long another series. punt. There's though, another later punt. Yes, there. another You're punt. Right. We got the replay. Okay, good job, Satterwhite. Uh, Again, this, this type of this approach, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure this is, this is well played here. Come on, fellas, let's get around him. That's the way to get to the football. But I wanted to make sure that we really kept on firing away, kept on firing away. Hey, if, it, if, if, it, if they happen to get us, they just got us. But we're going to try to make something happen. I, I really wanted to make sure that as best we could, as best we could, that we could keep that type of approach. And I think if we had sat back and tried to, play things straight, uh, who knows? There again, they've got us, now we just got them on one. Good job, Nobles. Uh, and, and maybe that's why we tried to do a few things. Now, you can see this stuff is having telling effect. I, I thought that, 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 that Steve Collins was really having some problems handling this. I guess OU felt that same way too because they replaced him with Gundy here later on. Good job, Gerald Hudson. OU's got enough speed defensively that it's, it's hard to get real big plays against them. Hudson broke the one long run and Again, we're making some yards here, but it's, it's, it's still, that's a little bit hit and miss, but I will credit OU's defensive people. We thought we had given them, again, some shifts and motions that, that might have put them in a little bit of a bad situation. Great effort here on uh, 
Cecil Wilson's part. Earl had a, a good, did a good enough job of just kind of dumping the ball off. And boy, Cecil made a, a real nice effort here. Draw play, a good effort on Gerald Hudson's part. So there we go, you can see it again. But we have basically avoided still on this drive a lot of, of third and long situations, which gives us the leeway to pick and choose and, and mix some things up and still have a realistic chance to get done what we need to do. And I think that was key really to the first half and we didn't get that done in the second half. Uh, you know, we had been shifting out of a power eye, uh, what you call some scatter type stuff. Uh, and then now shifting and coming back and running this. Came off the first series. This was the same play, Robbie, that we had opened the ball game with. Uh, little bootleg, nice play fake by Earl Wheeler. Good job faking the ball up into the line. Comes outside, the tight end's covered. He, he, he started to run the ball. Now he pulls up, see Robert Kirksey get open in the end zone. Throws a strike, that's a way to catch a football and get down. Touchdown Oklahoma State. Now we're gonna come in, kick the field goal, and and have a 14 to seven lead. Here's Blanchard in. 50 yard drive, seven plays, used up about three and a half minutes, and now we've got less than two minutes to go in the first half. Cowboys out in front 14-7. Well, we're, we're kicking into the wind, and, and we are really, really scared of, of Otis Taylor and Ted Long. I mean, there's reasons why they lead the country or ranked high in kickoff return. So we kick kind of a deep on side up into the wind, did a pretty good job of covering it. Here they come and trying to run some play action. They've got Kayla in the ball game right now. Good job, George Bright. We're playing some fairlies. We're not blitzing a lot right in here. I got told the coach, well, if they cross midfield now, start blitzing again, depending on what the time element is. Good, George, good job, George Bright. Now, they do run the option, and we were backed off a little bit in the secondary and hit a crack. This is one of the things that, that, that worries you about them. I mean, sometimes they will run options on long yardage. They used to do it all the time. If they get that ball kicked and you're not in, you're in a little bit different type of coverage, you got some problems. Okay, here's Kale running around. Good job, George, and, 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 and Gunny just kind of fired the ball out there. I thought we were, I thought Werner was going to intercept that at one point. Okay, now here to run a draw play. This next last play in it, Robbie. Run yes, a draw. Sir. Now we're getting into that scenario that we were talking about earlier in. All right, they've already started to leave the field. So back like I was talking about from the outset. Uh, we wanted to stop it with enough time to try to block the kick. Now it's already run to zero. I can't give an explanation really quite honestly, Robert, on why or how it didn't happen. Come back in here. Come on, fellas. We just kind of stood around and kind of watched him. He just run around, run around, throws his ball. You still watch this right here. Come on, fellas. You can't just stand there and watch somebody catch the ball. I mean, good job, Cooper. I mean, that's, uh, he went up and out muscled us. We got those, Werner and Ken can jump. They can jump as well as he can. He's a little bit taller. But again, irregardless of the scenario with stopping the clock, you cannot let this sort of thing happen. I'm hard-headed enough, Robbie, probably just say, hey, go ahead and fire that. That's not why we did that. But if, if, if just to fire it and say, we're going to play coverage and go ahead and do it. That's about like making a hole in one, probably, about the odds <laughs> right. of doing that. Well, we're at halftime now. We're all even at 14. The Pat Jones Show will continue right after this. Crowd of 50,000 certainly buzzing at Lewis Field and Stillwater at halftime. We're all even at 14. Uh, what, what does that do to your ball club uh, going into the locker room, Pat, with that big play in front of them? Interestingly enough, Robbie, it, it appeared to me, of course it happened, it was almost like being in the twilight zone, I think, for us mm -hmm. and them and probably media up in the press box and everybody else. But I thought, interestingly enough, uh, Cecil Wilson told me at halftime, he said, Coach, that might have been the best thing that could happen to us simply from an, a motivational standpoint. Now, I wasn't in full agreement with that. I mean, I don't like just obviously right. giving people touchdowns. But on the same hand, I don't think it really did anything bad to us, but, on, but I do think that it certainly picked OU spirits up ahead to. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't think it was the deciding play in the ball game, but I think it was certainly a contributing factor. And as we'll see in the second half, they come out and fumble and we get the ball back and this sort of thing. But at the half, there really wasn't a great deal of discussion. It was, we were a little bit uh, numbed by it, but that didn't last very long. It's an even ball game. The point we try to make right now is zero to zero, 14 to 14, same right. difference. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we would have all taken that going in prior to the start of the ball game. So the things that we talked about are that, that we have moved the ball. Uh, we have, we've hurt ourselves with a few miscues uh, defensively that, sure, they've hit us on some and we've hit them on some. And let's go back out and play. Now we've got an even ball game. But um, 
as far as really making us have a big dip, I don't think it did. I think it probably picked us up. I thought our defensive group was going to tear the locker room up. A little bit of frustration, but it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't anything bad. I thought, hey, we were revved up and ready to go. Now, I think it probably did pick these spirits up in the other locker room because of that late touchdown. Right. A lot of uh, exciting plays in the first half. We've got the second half to go. We'll be back with third quarter highlights when the Pat Jones Show continues. It's your Oklahoma had the option to start the second half. Uh, they wanted to go on offense, and Kerry Blanchard just, uh, he just booted this thing down to Oklahoma County. Oh, yeah, he kicked that through the uprights, I believe. Well, we've got the wind ball, and, and they've got the ball, so this is really uh, exactly what we wanted to happen, and this is exactly what we wanted to happen. We can't say we orchestrated that, certainly, but uh, again, this from a morale standpoint uh, came off exactly like what we needed to happen. They, they take the ball, we've got the win, they fumble the first play, now we take the ball over down on their end of the field. Okay, we thought we tried to go for the home run right here, we had run that little option and, and just overthrew it a little bit. I think we had, again, I didn't, I was not opposed to that. We had a screen called and they really did a good job of covering it, so Earl intelligently threw the ball away. Now we're going back and running the draw and we've got some room to run and come on now, I'm sure somebody's going to put their head on that football, but that's the way it's supposed to be and we got it. Now we kick a field goal here and uh, jump right back into the lead. So things had happened, Robbie, about like they need to have, with the exception of sure we'd have loved to have gone in there and like scored a touchdown. Six there, but you've got points on the board. We got points on the board, and, and again, we've still got the win at our back. And Blanchard comes in and kicks the ball off and, and just nails this one again and kicks it down the elf into the end zone so they cannot return the ball. So uh, uh, here they come. Here you start to blitz again. Now what they put when they put Kale in the ball game. Uh, this is one where this, we were curious to see consistently what would be their answer to this blitzing stuff. Well, and this was to throw the little stops and the stuff that uh, is the same thing that, that we had done. Of course, Larry Coker obviously answered it the same way <laughs> when he was here. Now, you'd like to be able, and it's kind of interesting, to be able to jump up and play some bump and run on that sort of thing, Robbie, but you, you, again, you're playing with fire on the deep pass, mm -hmm. and, and we, we wanted to uh, kind of mix some stuff in. And, uh, here again, we've got to, they were isolating Joe King. We knew going in they were going to put him on an island, uh, him and Mike Clark, depending on what the side it went to. And uh, we just, we had to hold up. We had to bend a little bit. We just wanted, didn't want to jump up there and again, give him a real big play by trying to make him throw the fade. Now they jumped it, it over through that one. So, so really, uh, Kale's making some pretty good throws. And here they ran a little cross, run up, cross some people outside and hit it. This is a good drive on their part, but you can see the answer to the, the blitzes is doing some of this stuff throwing the football. There's, he's getting hit several times, and Rashid was, and again, they're, they're, they're alternating their full backs, and here he goes and then throws this thing over through. See, that's, that, it's not as easy to execute that up and down the field as it might seem. Throws that one out here, and boom, so we've done some things here uh, that we've, determined, we've detected. Now what their answer to some of this stuff is, they come in, and, and uncharacteristically, Lasher misses the field goal. I mean, that's, he's, that family has hit some pretty right. crucial ones against us over the years, but he did come in and, and miss it, and we've, we've got the ball, we still, we've still got a lead. Uh, here's Gerald, he's, he's gonna make some yards, and that a boy, it's a way to, um, way to get after it. So we're still, I, again, I can't say we're gashing people, but he, he makes a nice cut here, and we're moving the chains. First we're, down. Uh, again, to, to cap things off, you sure, you need to take it and, and, and really and drive the length, get some points out of it, but we're playing somebody can run this fast and, and consistently, we, we our protection started breaking down down in here, but uh, it's hard to get real big plays. Fake draw, uh, I thought Earl probably rushed that a little bit. Curtis had done a good job of getting open. Okay, I thought this would be this big play right here. Uh, Kerry hit this punt pretty good, hit it a little bit low. Okay, Taylor comes and we miss him right there. Okay, somebody else gets a hand on and misses him right there and he's off the race. I was afraid he's gonna score. And somebody, I can't tell who that was, ran him down from back. This was a, This was a big play during the course of the ball game. Run the option, pitch it to one of the few times that they were successful with the option game on the perimeter. Uh, cracked and got us pinned and come back. Okay, now they run it and uh, they're giving good effort. They're probably, they're, they're running a little bit harder than, or with more success than we are tackling right here. But now they run the ball up inside with McKinley and don't make very much. Their attorney hit a crack. Come on, Richie Ainsley, we got another missed tackle. But we're, tri well, I think we're trying to fight and scratch to get to the ball, run a sneak, and go ahead. Now OU has jumped back into the lead. 
uh, come in and kick the extra point. But this thing is, is it's not over with by any stretch of the imagination. Yep, Oklahoma but, uh, 21, Oklahoma State 17. About six minutes left in the third quarter. So they come in, kick off. So uh, we have moved the ball well enough to, to make us feel like that, hey, if, if we can just keep on battling around, battling around, that we can make something happen, which I, I still think that, that we, we did and, and we could. Okay, come on, we got to hang on to that one right there, Curtis. They did a pretty good job of defending and their defense is getting revved up. Okay, here's the draw play. Here's Gerald Hudson again, up, dipping and dodging and doing all those things. Turn around and run the sweep. Got a little bit of room, not much, but a little bit. But enough for a first down. Enough for a first down. Here's the this form of option. Get on the outside, boy, if we could have avoided just one guy there, I thought their corner did a pretty good job of holding up outside against our receiver on a block wise. Again, this is not something we do a lot, this form option, but we had enough time to work on it uh, throughout the open date and got a little bit better at pitching the ball. And we hit a few cracks, and I think that was a pretty good little change up that, that gave us a, a chance on the perimeter. Okay, now we're going back, going play action. Okay, good job, Mayfield. We're moving the ball down the field. Pick up a 15. Here it is here. Uh, still, I make this point again, we're avoiding long yardage by and large. Uh, you know, so we're mixing up things real well. Nothing gives us the indication that it's going to be easy. On the same end, nothing gives us the indication that, that we can't uh, get some more points out of this situation. Okay, here's Vernon Brown in. Why well, they almost stripped that ball from him there. But he's giving good effort. So we're again moving right back down the field. Okay, here's Vernon Brown again. Nothing, well, I say nothing, but he's fighting, fighting, giving great effort. Okay, Earl's going back to throw this wire again. Our protection started breaking down on us, and, and, and that's demoralizing. Okay, we come in and punt. Well, I really kind of wanted to go for it, to be real honest with you. Been not, not bad enough to, to tell the coach to go for it. But uh, it, now we kill the ball on the one-yard line, on the one. So, again, the fourth quarter's fixing to start here in a little while, and uh, you know we're fixing to get the ball back. So you can see they run a play, don't make a great deal. Here comes the blitz again. There's a little bit of a crack, but not much. Good job, Nobles. So yeah. again, things are looking pretty good at this point. That was the final play of the third quarter. Brewer picks up four. At the end of three, Oklahoma 21, Oklahoma State 17. We'll be back right after this. The Cowboys have the Sooners pinned deep to start the fourth quarter. Oklahoma has it third and three from their own eight yard line. Yeah, you can see here's guys dancing around. Here's guys running through. Good play, Reuben Oliver. Reuben Oliver. So, uh, again, this is the punt. Is this the punt coming up here, Robbie? Right. All right, let's see if we're there. Okay, there it comes right there. <clears throat> Holy. Again, this was a thing that had, like I talked about before, gave us a chance, and we still thought we could block the punt. Mike Clark uh, picks it up, does the best he can. Now, we've got the ball near midfield. This is really crucial right here, I think. Again, okay, here's the option. Get it kicked. Okay, nice gain. Here's a repeat of it. Pick up of eight. Pick up of eight. Again, come on now. You can see this is not so that we're getting a little bit better at this stuff. I, mean, I won't say we're option oriented, but it gives us a, a little bit of a change of complexion with some stuff. Again, on the perimeter. It should help us in coverage. Okay. All right, here's Cecil Wilson running up inside. And it's, it's, it's not happening real easy, but it is starting to happen. Okay, here we go. There's the same play that we ran before. Okay, good job, Earl Wheeler. Uh, as far as not doing anything crazy or throwing an interception. And, now he comes back, sets, throws, nice job of greasing this ball mm -hmm. in here to Scott Copeland, you bet. Good job, Copeland, we pick up a first down. Okay, he's coming back, you see we're getting a little bit more pressure. Okay, this is the one he picks up the first down. That's the play he picks up the first down. I thought this was intelligent here. Again, I thought Earl did probably the best job he's done all season, really, of not trying to force the ball into places where it's, it's really not there. And again, as far as the awareness of knowing where the chains are and knowing how to get the first down, does a little slide there, and now we've, we've got the first, we're across midfield. And uh, is this the fumble? Yes, sir. I thought this was probably the big play in the ball game right here. This, this turnover right here, in my opinion, we're moving the ball, we've made a first down, we're down to their 30. Uh, now we, we, we turn around and, and, and turn it over and lose the football. They're coming back, moving around, they're still doing a pretty good job of mixing their stuff up, throw in complete. Uh, I, yeah, okay, this is a pretty big play right here. I thought little Gundy did a nice job of ducking up inside. I mean, he's not what you really consider an option quarterback, but he did a pretty good job of running. Big third down play. Okay, here McKinley hits the crack here. Wrap up Joe Key. Okay, let's get down here, men. Uh, you know, again, that's real good effort on McKinley's part. He's, he's playing hard and we respect him. Okay, run him in there again. So you can see they're just kind of playing smash ball now. 
All right, here it is. Give the ball off to the tailback. Not very much. If they want to play smash ball, we'll continue to blitz. I guess here it comes again. All right, they hit it. it makes a little bit of yards, but not a great deal. So it's this is boy, it's a pretty good confrontation that's happening in here. Spun out of one and making it, and somebody else got a hold of him. All right, give the ball off here. Not much. Michael Woolridge on the tackle. Well, I thought both squads were really competing with each other real hard. Okay, he he got hit right when he threw it. Uh, good good job of him timing. Again, he got drilled right when he threw the ball, and they did a good job of holding on. Okay, here's McKinley. Come on, you got to tackle better than that, fellas. Okay, now they give the ball off inside again, and boom, we turn them back the other way. Uh, you know, I thought, really, we stopped them to, uh, right here, told them to a field goal. That's a pretty good stand. Oh, that's a, that's a good stand. I mean, you, you hate for them to drive the ball down the field, but now they come in, hit a chip shot field goal. But 24-17, and this thing is a long way from being Still, over with at this point, Robbie. Right, got about four and a half minutes to go here. You're going to well, get the football We back. got the ball back out. Again, now we're probably going to get forced into more of a throw it back up and throw it situation than you would like. Okay, he comes back in here and hits Ronnie Fisher. Uh, again, a little bit hard to think you can get real big plays. All right, here's Hudson. All right, take care of that football, Gerald. Uh, down in here, okay, we're coming back. Now he's going back to throw. Our protection is starting to break down here, which which upsets me again. Now, hey, this was a big play. Mm. I, I don't know whether we've got a replay up. If no. this ball gets caught, we've got a first down on their side of the field with 322 left. He fumbles. Gerald comes in, fumbles. Uh, you know, we recover. Hey, what down is this, Robbie? This is third down. This here. is third down going back to throw. Uh, they drop an interception right here. We got lucky on this. Should have probably punted the ball here. I thought realistically the only chance we had to really win was to try to make something. Now, you know, defensively, you got to go in. Uh, they got the ball on the 10 yard line. They can basically do whatever they want to and probably going to go in there and, and score. But I, I hate to put the defense in this kind of position. Nose guard went the wrong way here and Rashid carries him in the end zone. But uh, I didn't think that we could stop them. I thought they would make first downs. I think we could have gotten the football. Well, I thought we could have kept them out of the end zone, Robbie, but even with some timeouts left, uh, nothing had given me the impression we could just snuff them. But uh, again, I'm not dealing in hind cycles, don't like it. But uh, uh, fourth and seven on, you know, you know, 20, the odds are not real good there. Now, here we're having to go back, throw it. You know, again, Earl did a good job of not just trying to drill it in. They're in a prevent style of, of defense now, three man rush. Okay, he does hit this one. Pick up a 20 to Robert Kirkson. So now, he's kind of working on the two-minute offense is basically what you're doing here. But uh, a good job. Again, I, I thought Kirksey played a good ball game. Certainly wish he'd have caught that ball at midfield. But I, uh, as far as Earl, using pretty good judgment, this was encouraging here. Uh, they, they bat the ball down. But again, I, better, than, better do that than just to go ahead and fire right into coverage. Dumps the ball off to Wilson. I mean, this guy's really a good player. He's fighting to get out of bounds. And, get the clock stopped and here comes Earl coming back and throws it right here and, and I'm not saying Kirksey's trying to get a call here. We just need to catch that one and get back in the huddle and here you can see the pass protection is breaking down and uh, this sort of thing. This baby's just about over with. Three, two, one and, and there it is, 31-17. Uh, yeah, heck of a ball game, Robbie. We'll wrap it up here in a little while but I thought both squads really, really competed extremely hard against each other. We'll be back right after this. Oklahoma State was two touchdowns short against Oklahoma this past Saturday, but Coach, uh, for three and a half quarters, more than that. I mean, it, with four minutes left in the ball game, you're in a position where you could win this football game. Well, certainly so. And again, if, if we had punted there, Robbie, with two and a half minutes left, the final score had been, I would assume, 24 to 17. But right. yeah, I thought it was really a, a pretty well played ball game. We only had two penalties throughout the. Oh, you only had four. So from that standpoint, I thought it was a very well played game. In my opinion, Robbie, the, the turnover at the 28, the turnover at the 33, the long pass prior to half, and the pass that we had a chance to catch across midfield with 322, those were the contributing factors, the things that really glared at me. Sure, you can always look up and down a lot of things as far as, a, again, a close loss and things will glare at you, but uh, we put ourselves in position, which is all you can ask. I, mean, I think we played well enough in spots to get in a position to win the ball game. Like I told the squad, and I know this sounds like a broken record, but you've got to, when you have a chance to make plays, go make them. Now, I can't tell you exactly how to do it. All we can do is hammer away and hope that when you get in that position, 
Now you got to make it. I mean, you just got to make the plays. And uh, oh, you did a, just a little bit better job of it than we did. I'm not sure, Robbie. We really deserve to win the game. I think we probably deserve to play close. Now, at some point, again, however, some of our guys are going to have to decide basically and go get it done. Now, deciding and getting it done are two different things. Uh, you know, and this sounds pretty harsh, but Robbie, I don't know that we des I don't think we deserve to win. I think we deserve to play close, and that's about what we got out of it. Well, I think uh, Oklahoma State uh, played very hard in the football game, and I can tell you that from the locker room, they were absolutely disappointed that they did not win the football game. And our play of the week this week comes from the offense uh, on an unbelievable six-yard touchdown run by, by Cecil Wilson. And uh, take a look at this. This is just uh, oh, this a is, great effort. It's a great uh, effort. You can, of course, Cecil Wilson's a great effort guy. He's the type of guy that, boy, if you had a whole squad of, not us, but anybody in America, you would never have really a problem with anybody in any regard, character-wise. Uh, athletically, effort-wise, or anything else, good surge. But play of the week, Cecil Wilson, six-yard touchdown run. Good guy, good player. Well, and that and that uh, capped off a 90-yard drive uh, for you too, which just seemed to that seemed like justice because uh, you were able to move that football right down the field. Well, used about five and a half minutes. In the Robbie, we are doing some things better. I mean, we're getting better. It is a little bit frustrating as a coach. Coach is. Again, to get to this point and, again, not be able to pull it off, but that's why they give you a whistle and a T-shirt, basically, <laughs> to go try to get the job done. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Pat Jones Show will continue. We'll talk about the opponent coming up. You stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Well, now that we are into conference play, members of the media will start keeping notes on who deserves to be all conference performers. And... We believe it'll be difficult for them to overlook the efforts of Cowboy wide receiver Curtis Mayfield. Uh, we have had the good fortune of watching this young man over the past four years mature not only as a player but as a person. Curtis Mayfield is the subject this week of our Cowboy Feature Report. Last year, Curtis Mayfield was a second team all Big 8 selection by both the Associated Press and United Press International. This year, Mayfield is a legitimate contender for first-team all-conference honors because he runs with speed and grace, has excellent hands, and is a threat to score every time he touches the ball. All that comes along with hard work and, you know, practice time and just watching other players. You know, I, I go out and practice every day and, you know, work hard as I can. You know, I watched Hartley when he was here and Bobby Riley and those folks when I was younger. You know, I basically, you know, just learned from watching and I've worked hard on my own stuff that I know. And, you know, hopefully I'll keep being successful as I'm doing now. The Dallas senior was highly recruited out of high school, but it wasn't all clear sailing when he got to Stillwater. Mayfield had to adjust to playing behind Hartley Dykes, and he had to adjust to the college environment. He had to grow up. Uh, I look back at when I was a freshman all the time, you know, the times that I was upset because I wasn't getting to play, you know, I was red shirt, and, you know, I quit the team. You know, I look back on all those type of things now, and now I see how childish those things were. And, you know, if I had all that to do over again, there's no way I would do that. Mayfield exploded on the scene last year with 49 catches. He is currently tied for first in the Big 8 in receptions this year and is third in the league in receiving yards per game. Mayfield holds the school record for receiving yards in a game when he caught six passes for 208 yards last year against Nebraska. When his playing days are over, Curtis Mayfield will be one of the top five pass catchers in Oklahoma State history, and he feels his play has improved enough to take him to a higher level. Yes, I feel very much that way. Um, at first, you know, earlier I had some doubts, you know, well, maybe I won't get to be good enough, but uh, you can always be good enough at whatever you want to do if you go out and work hard for it, and I've been doing that, and I'm going to keep on doing that. I don't mind telling you, I'm, I guess maybe I'm a little prejudiced, but every time I see Curtis Mayfield run a route, 
and the ball come to him, um, I, I think it's a touchdown. I think the guy's really talented. He, he's got an awful lot of ability. I'm really proud of <clears throat> what Curtis has done here. And I think you could tell by his words, Robbie, that you what most all of them go through. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's not real easy to get adjusted to college life, either athletically or academically. But Curtis has done a very good job of this sort of thing. And yeah, he's got a chance to play. I, I would imagine, depending on how the rest of the season goes, and, postseason bowl, bowl games and type of stuff, this type of stuff, he'll have an opportunity to play in the NFL. And I, the guy's done well. He's nearing his degree. And uh, really proud of Curtis in a lot of ways. He's an awfully good player. All right. That's great. Uh, the Pat Jones Show continues. They go on the road for a couple of weeks. We'll talk about that when we come back. Everybody in the Big 8 Conference was in action this past weekend. Pat, some pretty strange games. Well, uh, you can throughout see, the league. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just glad we're not doing the Bob Stoll show here. <laughs> if, if I saw what I think I saw, something's <laughs> bad the matter on that deal with that five down thing. I thought if I, we think we got problems here on some time stuff, right. that takes the cake right there. Uh, Kansas and Iowa State, I think Iowa State kicked a long field goal right at the gun to tie Kansas uh, in Ames. Nebraska, Kansas State, uh, getting Nebraska hung, I mean, I'm sorry, K-State hung in there for a pretty good while. I haven't seen film, I haven't really got the particulars of the ball game, but uh, obviously K-State did some decent things against Nebraska. Well, and, and that takes us to K-State, because that's where Oklahoma State will be next week. They've won three ball games, Pat. I mean, they they got to be thinking they're a pretty good ball club. Well, I think it's probably our b biggest test emotionally. Sure, we used a lot against OU. We always do lose a tough one. Now, we've got to make sure we go up there and play good. I think this is a toss-up ball game. Bill Snyder and his people have done a very good job. I have not seen any of them yet, but I know that they're, they're playing good defense. They're doing some good things offensively. Uh, they've got a chance. You know, they, ha or they had us beat down here last year when Mike comes back in the ball game and does some stuff right. there. So this will really be a very big test for us, particularly emotionally. We'll have to go up there and play a good ball game. Well, and I don't think, uh, and, and I talked to some of the guys in the locker room after the Oklahoma game, and, and I'm not saying that the rankings are gospel, but if Oklahoma is the seventh ranked team in the nation, uh, there doesn't seem to be a great deal of difference between Oklahoma State and the seventh-ranked team in the nation. Well, Pat. Robbie, I, I, I think that there's not probably a whole lot of difference with a lot of people throughout the country. And you see what you see on Saturdays with mm -hmm. Stanford, Notre Dame, and this sort of thing. Interesting, Robbie, the, we've lost, we're two and three right now. The three teams that have beaten us, Florida, OU, uh, TCU, are 14 and one. Now, I don't think there's, a, you know, other than Florida, I think Florida's very, very good. Right. I think OU can be at times. Uh, TCU slaughters Arkansas yesterday. Yeah. So I, I, there's not a whole lot of difference in a lot of people. And I think this stuff, you know, the any given Saturday scenario that we almost saw yesterday will continue to right. pop up around the country probably in, 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 in larger degrees. But the effort that was given by your ball club against Oklahoma, isn't that something that can be built upon that uh, now go win one on the road because you're getting better? Well, I think we're getting better at certain things. I still think we've got a long way to go, Robbie. I think that we'll have to play extremely, extremely well. Again, I think emotions are the keys. We don't have to say anything to get ready for OU. Now, this group here, we'll have to really do a good job as coaches and players of doing what you got to do and go up there and do it. Okay, Oklahoma State on the road. Uh, Saturday to take on the Kansas State Wildcats. We're out of time. Thanks for joining us for Pat Jones and Oklahoma State University. I'm Robbie Robertson. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>